Hi guys, uh, this is Maciek from Open Cashew. I have Dagobert Michelsen join me today. Hello, Dago. Hi, Maciek. Um, and we will talk about GAR, the Open Cashew packaging framework. For uh, those of you who aren't familiar with GAR, there are two introductory videos I made earlier. So if you aren't familiar with usage basics, um, I suggest uh, watching them first. Uh, the specific topic for today is modulations. Um, this will get very technical very quickly. So uh, before it does, I, I will give a quick overview. Mm, so sometimes when you build a package, there are some options you can choose from. For instance, uh, you can build uh, 32-bit or 64-bit binaries, or you can choose which specific library you want to use. For instance, um, there are programs that can use uh, slang or curses, but not both. Um, so what if you wanted to bu build both flavors and include both in the same package? Uh, this is where modulations come in. I think there are other examples as well. For instance, when you have a package that can be in a flavor that has little features or has a lot of features, like lip curl, right? We have a version of curl that is very uh, simple and has minimal features, and we have another one that has all the SSL and all the protocols and everything else uh, built in. Is that correct? Yep, that's basically it. Um, one other point to it is that uh, the resulting packages may or may not include uh, the respective binaries at the same time. For example, in, uh, the, uh, in the thing where you get a uh, minimal library and a full featured library, you mainly would have two packages resulting from it, which you can install afterwards. So you start with the less featured one and then enhance to the full featured one. Whereas in the 32 and 64 bit case, uh, you would most likely have a unified package which includes, which includes both RITs. What would uh, it look like on the, um, on the recipe? How, how do you use modulations? Yeah, the simple case um, where you select between 32 and 64 bit is uh, built in because it's so customary to use it. Um, it is enabled just by saying build 64 equals to 1, and you have automatically two separate build processes, one for 32-bit and one for 62-bit, in separate build trees, uh, which are built afterwards, and then merge so together. So when, when you say build trees, is that uh, uh, like a directory in which you run, configure, and make, and make install, or something like that? Yes, it's two different directories. So, uh, so when you when you run a, a build that is 32 bits plus 64 bits, um, what happens in in GAR? Because some some operations have to be repeated, and some operations are done only once. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. If you see what phases are executed in GAR, you start with a prerequisites phase, which makes sure that you have all the development packages for the requirements installed. And this is done only once here in, in the global modulation. And also uh, the fetching of necess necessary source code is done only once. It is then uh, stored inside the build tree and also the verification of the checksum that you get the right binaries which are not uh, pooched. And then the actual building. The actual building is done in different trees. In this example, we have three modulations, one, two, three, with three different ISARs. If you would just build 32 and 64 bit, you would have two modulations, just two modulations. And all the phases, which then are related to building, are executed inside the modulation, separately in a different tree, like extraction, applying patches, calling configure, building the sources, calling make test, installing them and merging them together in a unified tree from where you can then cut your packages from. 
So um, can you tell a little more about the merge phase? Because uh, I think that, so, so for instance, when you build a, a um, 32 bit and 64 bit flavor, uh, many files, and you, and, and you install both of these, many files will be the same, right? If, if I, let's say, build something, something uh, that has, let's say, um, the file utility. So the file utility has a binary, a library, and a data file with all the magic checksums. Right? File is this uh, the utility that allows you to, to figure out what type of file uh, you have. So you say file blah, and it says, oh, blah is a, is a text, or blah is a binary, right? So this has this data file, and this data file will be the same for both 64-bit and 32-bit. And, uh, and so when you're merging, you probably want to kind of pick the 64-bit binary and the 32-bit binary, but only one, and put both of them into in the resulting package. But you will only have one data file. So this should be, this has to be handled somewhere, and I think it's the merge phase. Yes, that's correct. Um, there is a default modulation, which is 32-bit uh, ISA, and everything is copied. And ISA is, um, ISA is an instruction set architecture. Set architecture. Yes. So an ISA would be like Spark 8 and Spark, Spark V8 is for Spark V9 would be ISAs, and x86 and AMD64 would be also a pair yeah, of ISAs. i386 and Pentium Pro and AMD64, yes. Right, 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 okay. So, um, so, so these are merged as separate binaries to separate directories, uh, I suppose? So I have now a minimal example here for gperf, which is a new perfect hash function generator. It's a development package, um, which you may or may not find useful. Uh, I chose it mainly because it's simple. You can just configure and install it, and everything is, uh, can be done right out of the box from this package. OK, so you have this basic description. You just build the default ISA, which is 32-bit and uh, Spark V8 on Spark, and uh, Pentium Pro on uh, i36. And if you now enable 64-bit, you just add build 64 equals to 1. It's just one line, and you make a combined package. And uh, the question was about the layout. If this is merged now, you will find that in addition to the gperf in the bin directory, you find the directory named with a more specific ISA, like Spark v9, where then the respective binary is put in for 64-bit. You now have two binaries in the same package, and at the moment you have to choose manually if you want to execute the 32-bit binary or the 64-bit binary by calling it in the respective path. So tell me about this new line, uh, ISA yeah. exec. Yeah, there's also the possibility to automatically execute the best ISA available for this machine. Um, if you execute the command ISA list, you get the list of ISAs the machine you are currently working on is able to execute from most effective to least effective. And so like a, a, a simple ISA would be what, Spark V8 and uh, Spark V9 plus, I don't know, Vis2 plus or something would be a higher higher ISA. Yes, and the higher ISA would be put, would be searched first in the list when using ISA exec. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is done by replacing the binary in bin by a hard link to the ISA exec binary, which is shipped with Solaris. And each ISA is searched as a subdirectory with the same name as the hard link. We'll see in a minute what that means. That means if we turn on ISA exec in GAR, you have bin gperf now being a hard link to ISA exec here. And both 32-bit and 64-bit builds are now located in subdirectories, Spark v8 plus subdirect gperf and Spark v9 subdirectory gperf. And if you're now on a 64-bit machine, you will automatically get the 64-bit binary. Very simple, very easy. 
Cool, so I don't even have to think about that. It will be just picked automatically for, for any inv invocation. Right. Okay, so next example I have prepared is uh, um, building of several versions of a library with less features and more features. How does it start? Um, as always, we have name, version, guard type, which may be omitted, description. This is all standard. Um, we have lots of uh, package descriptions here. The interesting stuff we want to focus on today starts a little lower. That's a long time. Ah, here. We have extra modulators. That means that we still get the standard modulation, about 32-bit and 64-bit, which we do want for library builds. But we also have an extra modulation dimension called features. When you see in di dimension, you mean something like you. So we have a list of, of modulations. We use like 32-bit and 64-bit. And now we have like, like, a, like a matrix because now we yes. have this uh, minimal and full. So we have minimal and full for 32-bit. So 32-bit minimal, 32-bit full, and 64-bit minimal and 64-bit uh, bit full. So that's what it kind of expands the, the whole matrix. And if we had two modulators, two extra ones, it would be like three-dimensional matrix. Exactly. And you can have as many modulation dimensions as you want. It does get a bit... Um, complex to write down, but technically there's no problem in having as many modulators as you want. So how do we, how do, does this all get in? If you are inside a modulation, the variables with the modulator is predefined with all values of modulations underscore name of the modulator. That means if you are inside the build phase of a modulation, the variable features has either the value minimal for the minimal modulation or the value full in the full modulation. So can, you can use the value of the modulator variable. Right. And if you want to have like a, an if statement that di did something different for, for each of the, um, of, of the modulations. In fact, there's an even more elegant way. Um, I have now here defined a set of um, switches to configure, which mm -hmm. I call extra underscore configure underscore arcs underscore features minus minimal, with minimal features disabling LDAP, no lib SSH, no ARES, no lib RMTP, and the full feature set with all of that, and SPNigo and LDAP and everything. And this is not used by default yet. You have to explicitly enable this by using this conditional expansion. These I configure see. arcs here are always the same for every package. Um, and this one here, like dollar extra configure arcs features minus features, expands to the values we have defined earlier. Oh, I see. So this is like a custom modifier to your to your uh, build, just because you are um, altering the configure arcs and not some other uh, variables. Because you can imagine that some of the build descriptions will have a completely different way of um, selecting what you want in the build. Yes, exactly, exactly. I could have named the variable any name I want. I just need to make sure that during the expansion. Um, I use the same name and that I use the suffix here with the name of the respective modulation. Right. Yeah, so basically that's it for the building. However, mm -hmm. if you use more modulators, there are some subtle things which are more complicated. Um, one of these is uh, that um, I want to rename here some of the files because if you, if you co make a combined package with 32 and 64 bit or even different packages in the, in the package tree, you need to put the files from the modulation at different places. If every file from every modulation would be at the same place, 
You would just override it, and you wouldn't have variety, which do we want. And so you have and at least to have uh, either rename some of the files or move them to different positions in the resulting binary. And this is done at the merge phase, which is a bit clumsy right now. Um, here we are using a feature, um, same here, uh, with variable definitions, conditional variable definitions, where we rename specific files by using regular expressions on the file name. And here, for example, we rename libcurl here with some kind of regex syntactic additions to libcurl feature inside the full featured modulation here. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So this is one thing. Um, the other thing is that Gar has no idea on how to merge the different modulations if you have more than one modulator. If you just modulate over the ISA in 32 and 64 bit, it knows perfectly well how to overlay all this with subdirectories of, of lib and bin, what we have seen earlier in the gperf example. Um, but if you have more modulators, GAR has no clue on how to overlay the, these. So GAR has uh, to make this, you have, have to make this explicit to GAR. And uh, this is done by defining merge scripts and uh, merge dears if the rule requires it, for the different ISAs. Oh, I see. So scripts, so scripts will refer to, to targets in GNU Make. So this will mean that it will call the copy all target. Essentially, yes. And when you say merge this, then you just say, oh, so for the default 64 and for the, for the minimal, only merge the lib there. Exactly. Um, so I have here, here the matrix of some of the built-in merge rules. And uh, basically, you have to, to decide between two features for the rules. One is, do you want to copy all files from the modulation, or do you want to just merge in some of the directories? This is done here by using either copy all or the, the rules in, uh, in this row with copy only, copy only some of the files. And then you have to decide if you want to copy all files to the same location or if you want to do some kind of relocation due to the ISA and ISA named subdirectories. These are the built-in rules. You can have any rule, any rule you want. If this doesn't suit your, your case, you can always write your own rule, look at the GAR source code, and yeah, it's not, not really hard to write a, a custom merge rule. So if you want to just copy the whole tree, you use copy all, do not relocate, copy all. If you just want to merge over, for example, a binary and a library, um, at the same location, you use copy only. If you want to have the whole tree but relocate it, relocate bin, lib, lib, exec, and uh, sbin, you use copy relocate. And if you just want to copy over bin, lib, and nothing else, you use copy relocated only. So now if we take this matrix and compare this again to our example, you see that we have uh, merge scripts for ISA default features minimal is copy all. So just take everything we have and move that over. In the 64-bit case, we want to copy just the relocated files like merge over bin and library. And uh, copy config only is for package config files. That is also a built-in, which is then merged over. So and the config files would be the standard open cache you, uh, like opt, let's say, um, slash, etc. Uh, op opt uh, CSW, and then whatever follows. Package config dot PC. 
the dot pc files for package config. Oh right, for yeah, package right. Package. so that's that's for the ones that are used for compiling. Yes. Sure. And the copy relocated only rule also takes merge ds, so we only merge over the library and not the resulting binaries because yeah, it basically doesn't pay off to have a 64 bit curl binary. It doesn't gain you anything. All right. So the idea is that if you if you later build another another program that wants to use lib curl and want you want to build that in 64 bit, you have the 64 bit curl available. But just to run curl in the command line, you don't really need uh, the, the the 64 bit binary because it doesn't buy you anything and it only uses more memory. Exactly. Exactly. And for the other rule, um, in the uh, ISA default case full featured, you also copy over everything, um, probably overwriting some of the features minimal file. Um, but this is not really relevant because they are identical. Um, same as uh, for the default 64 case, where these are also relocated and copied over only for the library directory. Mm -hmm. Cool. So when that all is merged, you have this this single. So how many packages do you actually have? Because you, I assume you have 32-bit and 64-bit merged into one package. But then I think that the, f the minimal and the full versions of, the, of libcurl that should go into a separate package, right? Because that's the idea. You want to be able to, to install a minimal curl without pulling, I don't know, uh, lib LDAP or, or other heavyweight libraries. Um, yeah, we can look. Um, if I go into the work directory for this specific uh, platform and look at the directories, you see that we have here the build directories for each ISA, which are then installed mm -hmm. here. And then during merge, all are overlaid and merged together in package root. I now do a find to package root so we can have a look. And uh, you see that we have also the simple files and the more featured files here. So the important point is, first, you make a unified tree where you put all files you want to be in any package. This is important. Any package inside package root. And mm -hmm. then if we go back to the make file, um, you can then split these files up to different packages. For example, we build a libcurl4 here. This is mainly the basic package, where you just pick package uh, libcurl so far in uh, package files for libcurl4. And you have another package, libcurl4 feature, which is then just picking up libcurl feature SO4 file. This package file right. here is just for picking up all ISAs. It's an automatic mechanism which expands to every library and every ISA subdirectory. So if the library is there, it will be picked up. And if it's not there, then it will be just skipped. Yes. OK. So when uh, can you uh, show again this um, view of the, of the package root directory with everything merged in? Sure. Just to, uh, I was thinking about illustrating this um, uh, renaming of, of of libraries. So when you have, for instance, this, um, yeah, just where your arrow is, uh, libcurl feature dot so dot four. So the dash feature um, word in the file name was added by the packs options that you specified in the make file. So when you initially, when initially that binary, the data inside this file was built, it was just named libcurl.so.4. That's, exactly. that's, that's what yes. I'm thinking, right. And, and the PAX is the, is the utility that handles copying of files from 
a uh, modulation specific, so this, let's say, 64-bit feature um, build directory or in, even install directory, I think, because you first build and you can install into an install directory and then you use packs to pick out from, pick files out from the install directory into the package root and while copying, Pax is also renaming. So this, this is where the dash feature string gets, gets appended. The build uh, of the original curl library doesn't even know we are renaming stuff, right? We are doing this afterwards. Yes, exactly, exactly. Libcurl is a pretty, pretty advanced example um, because you have to tell the basic libcurl that it needs to pull in libcurl feature if it's available. And that's a, that's a pretty advanced uh, obscure technology used here. So if you want to use this as an example for your own package. Yeah, it's, it's, probably, it's probably more than, than most of, of, of packages that you could, you could want to build. But at least it, it, it illustrates the, the mechanics of, um, of modulations. The automate versions are, are incompatible to each other. And Upstream has uh, decided that they make a naming which allows parallel installation of different major versions of automate. For example, you can install automate 1.6 in parallel to automate 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 13. So we can have mm -hmm. all installations in parallel and the directory naming is done right by default from upstream. That means you, oh, can I just, see. you can just build every major version and then just overlay them and make one unified package containing all versions of automate. So what does the merging phase look like in this recipe? Um, first I would like to look at the modulators. So you have one extra modulator version. Mm -hmm. where you add the modulations and uh, then go over adding the source files for all these versions which are then built one after one. And if you then go down a little further to all the merge phase um, to the merge phase Ah, here we have it. The merge phase. <laughs> okay, so this is this is a bit more special because it uses make file evaluation. Um, I didn't want it to write down. I didn't want it to write it down because it's all the same. We use copy all for all modulations. Copy all for all modulations, and uh, this is done by iterating over modulation versions. And then use an eval on merge scripts, isa isa minus version version to copy all directly. So um, let me let me look at the for each line um, closely. So so basically, what it will do is it will create a, a series of merge scripts underscore isa dash whatever is the current isa uh, designation lines, and they will be all assigned the copy all. So that's so basically, this just kind of expands into this um, series of lines with with the uh, merge scripts definition. Yes, exactly. So it's a bit of a syntactic sugar, more than any kind of uh, logic and, and 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 flow control in this case. Yes, exactly. So let's say if somebody wanted to learn more. Uh, what would be uh, a good place to go and, and, and read? So, if you want to know more about modulations and uh, the documentation, you start, as always, by going to GAR Open Cache UR. And from there, you scroll down to the advanced section, as this is a pretty advanced topic. And there you have modulations down here about modulations and merging details. And uh, from here, you see again uh, how modulations how modulations work, the different phases, some examples, and explanation of all the merge scripts. Again, what we talked about. In, in addition, 
to some more in-depth implementation details uh, to merging and uh, variables and how to debug things and all the definitions. Very cool. Thanks, Dago, for, for presenting um, the modulations framework for us. And uh, we'll see you again uh, in another screencast about OpenCashew building framework.